and welcome to today's lesson looking at free enforced vibrations. Now today's lesson will be part of the AQA A-level physics specification on periodic motion. Now this particular part of the course is found on paper one or the A-level papers but not found on the AS physics papers. So we're going to try and look today at free enforced vibrations. So we're going to try and describe free enforced vibrations in simple harmonic motion. So if we are successful in learning today's lesson, you should be able to describe and define a forced and freely vibrating system, describe and define a damp oscillating system, and then detail the different types of dampening found on systems, which falls into the following part of the A-level AQA physics specification. Now, in the it's found in the simple harmonic system, especially the effects of dampening on oscillations, and also on forced vibrations and resonance, where we need to look at a qualitative treatment of free and forced vibrations. So in previous lessons, we've covered the mathematics behind oscillations and several different oscillating systems. So these include mass spring oscillators. So here, the mass spring moves in a periodic fashion. It exhibits simple harmonic motion. Now remember, an oscillating system with simple harmonic motion is when the displacement of the oscillator is proportional to the acceleration of the oscillator in the opposite direction, or A is directly proportional to minus X. Now another type of um, simple harmonic oscillator could be the simple pendulum, which again exhibits simple harmonic motion. Now it can categorize all oscillating or vibrating systems into two different types. The type one is a free vibration system. Now these are objects which oscillate freely after being initially disturbed. So for example, a swing is a free oscillator. Now these are systems which os oscillate naturally. These include systems that don't have that have to be disturbed initially, but then don't need a further force. So free oscillators only require an initial force to start the motion to overcome inertia. Now if no external forces are applied to the system after it starts vibrating, we call the oscillator a free oscillator. Now free vibrations involve no energy transfer into or out of the mechanical system. Now the second type of system we have for oscillations is a forced vibration system. Now these are objects which have oscillations produced when a driving force is placed on it. So for example a signal generator is an example of a forced oscillator. Now a forced vibration is caused by a periodic driving force acting on the system. Now this periodic driving force causes work to be done into the system. Now these systems uh, always need a force to cause them to oscillate. So these systems need to be driven constantly to cause them to oscillate backwards and forwards. Now the force causing this movement is called the driving force. So if a force is continually or repeatedly applied to keep the oscillation going, it's called a forced oscillator. It has a periodic driving force. So consider a pendulum or a mass spring system. They will oscillate after an initial force is placed upon them to overcome inertia. Now it doesn't need to be a constant force acting upon them to produce a movement after the initial force, it just needs that initial force. So if an oscillator is set into motion and has no periodic driving force acting upon it, we describe it as a free oscillator. So a simple pendulum is an example of a free oscillator because it will continue to oscillate freely after it's been displaced. So once the initial force has taken place, the oscillator will still oscillate. Now a free oscillator produces free vibrations which is defined as where a system is given initial displacement and then allowed to oscillate freely. Now the free oscillator system will oscillate at a set frequency called the natural frequency which we give the symbol F0. Now here in this example the pendulum is vibrating at its natural frequency. Now the factors which affect the natural frequency are the terms in the equation used to calculate the time period of that oscillator because you know that time period is equal to 1 over frequency. So it works through like that. Now when an oscillator is oscillating as a free vibrator, ideally there's no energy being put into the oscillating system and no energy being taken out of the oscillating system. The total energy in that oscillator remains fixed. So this assumes that there's no dampening forces on this object such as air resistance or friction in the system. So here's an example of a natural of a free oscillator oscillating at its natural frequency. <laughs> Now, a 
force oscillation is one for which a periodic driving force acts on the oscillator, affecting its oscillation. This driving force is constantly acting on the system. So an example of a forced oscillation is a harmonic oscillator. They tend to have a motor driving the oscillation, which is very, very important. Now, forced oscillators or vibrators can only be produced when the periodic driving force acts on the object. The periodic driving force is placing energy, doing work, into the oscillating system. Now, oscillators can be forced to behave in a different way to their natural, free, to their natural motion. So if, as a pendulum was swung one way, you were to push in the opposite direction, it would turn back. So this action turns a free oscillator into a forced oscillator. Now this is a very energetic activity to do. It requires a lot of energy to be put into the system to achieve this. It's a lot more efficient to allow a system to oscillate at its natural frequency. So repeated applications of force from your hand in different directions can force the pendulum to oscillate at a different frequency. So it turns from a natural oscillation as a free or a free vibration into a forced oscillation so this would be a forced oscillation and the frequency you would cause in the swing at would be the driving force now forcing oscillating systems to not oscillate at their natural frequency involves adding energy into the system whilst it's whilst it oscillates it's much easier to let an oscillating system oscillate at its natural frequency than to drive it now if a system is not oscillating at its natural frequency it's unlikely to undergo simple harmonic motion and will disappear energy quickly. This is why a forced oscillator needs to maintain a constant driving force for that driven frequency. So here is a video showing a free oscillator being turned into a forced oscillator. Now as watching this video you'll notice the following. You'll observe the work that's needed to be done to turn your free oscillator into a forced oscillator and then also look at what happens when the driving force is being moved. After a couple of seconds, it returns back to its natural frequency. It returns to being a free vibrator. So, many oscillating objects, such as piano strings, can be forced to oscillate, but oscillate best at their natural frequency. The driving force puts energy into the system at a certain frequency, not necessarily the same as the natural frequency of the system, and the natural frequency is the frequency which a system would oscillate if there was no driving and no dampening force. Now, many oscillating objects, such as yo-yos, can be forced to oscillate as well, but they oscillate best at their natural frequency. So if a yo-yo is allowed to hang freely and move up and down naturally, it's carrying out a free vibration. We would say the yo-yo is vibrating at its natural frequency. But if the yo-yo is made to vibrate by a periodic driving force of moving your finger up and down, then the yo-yo is carrying out a forced vibration. The frequency of the oscillation is the driving frequency. Now, if the driving frequency so the driving force produces the driving frequency, which is the same as the natural frequency, then the amplitude of oscillation is at its largest. We say it's undergoing resonance, which we'll look at in the next lesson. So let's summarize what we've learned so far. Free vibrations. They involve no energy transfer into or out of the air system to the surroundings. Natural oscillations are a system that's, that's been displaced from equilibrium and the system oscillates at its natural frequency. Whilst force vibrations involve energy transfer into the system from a periodic driver, oscillations in the system are due to a periodic driving force and the system oscillates at its natural frequency. Now an object which is freely oscillating is observed to dissipate energy to the internal energy store of the surroundings. So if a system is performing simple harmonic motion at its natural frequency, its energy will dissipate through frictional forces acting upon the system. So in the example of a simple pendulum, friction causes energy in the simple harmonic system to transfer to the internal energy of the surroundings, and air resistance causes energy in the simple harmonic system to transfer to the internal energy of the surroundings. If a pendulum is left to swing without interference, its amplitude will decrease with each swing owing to the internal resistance and the friction of the string. Now, although the amplitude decreases, the time period for one oscillation remains constant throughout. Now, the forces which reduce the motion of the oscillator and dissipate energy to the internal energy of the surroundings are, caused, are called dampening forces. These are frictional forces 
which oppose the motion of an oscillating body and they slow down or stop simple harmonic motion from occurring. So the effect of an oscillating system decreased in amplitude due to losing energy from the simple harmonic system to the surroundings is called dampening. Now, like we mentioned before, dampening forces are resultant forces which cause work to be done from an oscillating system to the surroundings. Another name for dampening forces is dissipated forces because these forces are causing energy to be dissipated into the surroundings. Energy is transferring from the mechanical system to the internal energy of the surroundings. These forces are making the system an open system. Now, systems are often deliberately damped to stop them oscillating or to minimize the effect of resonance, which we'll look at in the next lesson. Now, parts of systems which are designed to produce dampening forces are called dampeners. So, for example, we've got car dampeners, which are found in the wheels of a car, which can be used to stop a car oscillating up and down when they go over bumps. Now, the, the dampening types are classified by the effect that they have on the oscillating motion of the system. Now, Galileo was the first scientist to observe dampening because he made an important observation whilst watching lamps swing in Pisa Cathedral. He noticed that the swinging gradually died away, but the time taken for each swing for the lamp stayed roughly the same because the swing of the lamp was being damped by air resistance. And when he investigated this idea further, he realised the effect of damp on oscillating systems could be separated into four different phenomena. So you've got four types of dampening. The first type of dampening is under dampening or light dampening. Now this is dampening that slowly reduces the amplitude of oscillations but keeps the time period and frequency of oscillations almost constant. So in this type of dampening, the oscillator continues backwards and forwards and the amplitude decreases each time but the frequency stays the same. In real terms, the oscillator decreases in swinging over time. Now most types of oscillators you find in the real world are lightly damped. So the dampening effect here is very gradual and the, the amount of the amplitude changes each time is very very small. Now most systems in the real world are what we call undamped or light damped and oscillate while the amplitude decreases exponentially. So for example like a mass oscillator on a spring or a simple pendulum. Now the dampening may be quite small but eventually these masses will come to rest. Examples like we said before are the simple pendulum and the mass spring system. The second type of dampening is heavy dampening. Now that's dampening that reduces the amplitude of the oscillations but keeps the time period and frequency almost constant. Now basically it's the same as light dampening because in real terms the oscillator decreases in swinging over time but unlike light dampening the dampening effect here is quite Fast. Heavy dampening is the same as light dampening except it takes less time to stop oscillating. So in, in theory the reduction in amplitude occurs in a faster time. So examples of heavy dampening again are the simple pendulum and the mass spring system. However the resistive forces would need to be increased by using objects with larger surface areas because this would increase the air resistance so increase the dampening force. The third type of dampening is called critical dampening. That's when an oscillator returns to the equilibrium position in the quickest possible time without going past the equilibrium position. So in theory, it will only carry out half a cycle of an oscillation. Now in this type of dampening, the oscillator returns to the equilibrium without making, without making one oscillation as quickly as possible. In real terms, the oscillator returns to the centre after being displaced really, really quickly. So a critically damped oscillator returns to the equilibrium position very quickly. The dampening effect here is very, very sudden. So an example of a critically damped system is the shock absorber in a car. It's advantageous that the oscillations decay as quickly as possible without carrying out a full oscillation because you don't want your car bouncing up and down when you go over a bump in the road. Now here, the system does not oscillate but asymptotically approaches equilibrium condition as quickly as possible. Now the fourth type of dampening is what we call over -dampening. Now, over dampening is when the oscillator returns to its equilibrium position in a very slow time without going past that position. So, it's the same as critical dampening in the instance it doesn't have a full oscillation, only half an oscillation, and it just returns straight to equilibrium, but it occurs over a much longer time period. So, it returns to equilibrium position very slowly. In real terms, the oscillator returns to the center after being displaced very, very, very slowly. So, the dampening effect here is very very gradual. This is probably the most dissipative dampening effect. 
So overdampening can be considered an extreme version of critical dampening. An example of overdampening in the real world would be heavy doors, as this takes place so the doors do not slam shut too quickly and people can walk through them, but the door doesn't swing backwards and forwards. So let's go through what the four types of dampening are. Number one, under dampening or light dampening. Dampening that slowly reduces the amplitude of oscillation to keep the time period and frequency constant. Number two, heavy dampening. Dampening that reduces the amplitude of oscillations but keeps the time period and frequency almost constant. Type three, critical dampening when the oscillator returns the equilibrium position in the quickest possible time without going past that equilibrium position. And finally, number four, over dampening when the oscillator returns to its equilibrium position in a very slow time without going past that position. Now, all types of dampening reduce the amplitude of oscillation over time. Generally, the heavier the dampening, the quicker the amplitude is reduced to zero. An exception to this, though, is over dampening. And all types of dampening dissipate energy from the mechanical system to the internal energy store of the surroundings. Now, critical dampening is often desired because such a system returns to equilibrium rapidly and remains at equilibrium as well. In addition, a constant of force applied to a critically damped system moves the system to a new equilibrium position in the shortest time possible without overshooting or oscillating about the new position. Now, in it, interestingly enough, plastic deformation of ductile materials reduces the amplitude of oscillations in periodic motion in the same way as dampening, because as the material changes shape, it absorbs energy, so the oscillation becomes smaller. So it's a bit of a synoptic link with the materials topic covered in the previous modules. So we can show the different states of dampening with the following graph. So we can see here the idea of under dampening, which is carrying out and numerous oscillations with a constant time period and frequency but the amplitude decreases with each oscillation in an exponential fashion. We've got critical dampening, which is when the oscillator returns to equilibrium in the shortest possible time. And then you've got over dampening, which is when the oscillator returns to equilibrium position over a very, very long time. So the only damped oscillators that can complete a full cycle are lightly damped and heavily damped systems, not critically damped and over damped. So, what have we learned in today's lesson? We should hopefully understand the effects of dampening on oscillations. We should have a qualitative treatment of free and forced vibrations. We can start to look at the idea of resonance and we'll follow the ideas of, da of dampening and the sharpness of resonance in following lessons. Now, if in theory we've been successful, we can define and describe a free and forced vibrating system, define and describe the damp oscillating system, and detail the different types of dampening found on systems. I hope you've enjoyed this lesson on free vibrations, forced vibrations and dampening and have a lovely day.